The next woman was introduced to, to, to me and to, to us um, by, uh, by one of our, our entrepreneurs. And to be honest, I really couldn't. I was so impressed with Andarka and her, her co-founder and colleague, Larissa, um, that I just said, I, th I think within 10 minutes, I was inviting you to come. Um, and Dark has done something really amazing in that uh, very few people have been able to secure finance from Rolls-Royce. Many of you who will know who Warren East is, is an incredibly impressive individual. He built ARM Semiconductor, then he built Rolls-Royce. Very humble man, but incredibly impressive and uh, was a, really a, a backer of uh, Andarka and so forth. So what I've asked Andarka to do is to just share her vision of how to solve the energy ecosystem in sub-Saharan Africa, which is what she and her colleague, co-founder Lar Larissa, are doing. Andarka, thank you so much for coming. I know you're very busy. You have some incredible things. But would you please welcome Andarka to the stage? Oh, the carpet rule. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, St. Maurice. How are you today? Good afternoon. Yeah? Yes. Did you have a good trip and a safe trip back here? Yes. Right. Really pleased to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, the connection as well through Kimberley and, and Lame. Before I start, I just want to tell you a bit more about me because you're like, who is that ex-corporate girl standing in front of you and, you know, claiming that she could contribute or um, solving some issues uh, or leveraging actually I would say, great potential into Sub-Saharan Africa. My name is Nia Kamboji. Um, I'm Senegalese, grew up in France, in Gambia, work in Europe, Asia, um, yes, Americas, and um, also Germany. I'm a graduated um, from chemistry, so I like the molecules. I always say that with engineering and technology, is always start with the molecule, Mendeleev, if you remember that. That table, otherwise there is no materials. Spent seven years in the automotive industry and 15, 16 years with the Rolls-Royce group, mainly in aerospace, land-based power, sea-based powers. Uh, basically, they do propulsion system. No, I don't have a Rolls-Royce car. And no, Rolls-Royce doesn't do the car. Actually, it's BMW who does the car, just as a as clarification there. So, as I said, I spent 22, 20 plus years in, in, in corporate. So you may ask yourself, what a corporate girl trying to do now, right? At Rolls-Royce, they are still pioneering the power that matters. And as I said, uh, maybe I haven't, I'm a graduated, um, I'm a first graduate out of poverty, if I can put it that way, from my background and my family. So if you work for a company that pioneer the power that matters, if you have gathered the skills experience around energy, and you are pioneering the power that matters, it's come a time where you have to ask yourself, am I giving back to the world that brought me where I am? Am I using my knowledge and my experience to actually deliver that powers where it matters the most? We are all here today, and I think after we go and see the, the Aptera car, which is a, a brand new EV, trying to fight climate change and trying to build a more sustainable and a better world. Sustainability and climate change comes only if we do it together as a team in an inclusive way. Today, I want to talk to you about Africa. Oh. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch the carpet. Why Africa has really are facing the biggest challenge of mankind, the solution goes through Africa. Do you know why? You, all of you have that in your hand, smartphones. We talk about mining, we talk about minerals, we talk about energy. And that is the centerpiece where all the resource for fighting climate change is coming from. Yet, we're going to go into it. It is an untapped market. You have 1.2 billion people in around 48, uh, 54 countries. In terms of energy, which is the indispensable prerequisite for economic development, but most importantly, for enhancing human quality of life, this big continent only has 100 gigawatt of installed power. So let me put that maybe into context, what does this mean? Because this sounds to be okay, what are those numbers? We are here in Switzerland, 
8.7 million people, 22 gigawatt installed capacity. This is basically the generation to be able to have the lights here, all the equipment we are using and heating the house and etc. 22 gigawatt for 8.7 million people. If I take just one country in Africa, maybe the most populous, Nigeria, 210 million people, 10 gigawatt is installed capacity. What does it mean? 100 million do not have access. 100,000 of small and medium-sized companies do not have proper energy to drive their business. And you know the consequence of that. In Germany, Chancellor Merkel say, wir schaffen das. She meant when she opened the borders for 1.5 million refugees. That range of refugees will continue to grow because there is no economic perspective to the level it should be. And the reason is simply lack of energy. So that's where we are contributing here today. But of course, who says energy, and to, today I'm talking to investors, there are two things that matter. Making sure that no one is left behind, but making sure as well, because at the end of the day, this is economy, that we can generate a reasonable and solid returns for people who contribute to solve that problem. This is a $27 billion market opportunity. What do we do? We look at those countries and we leverage the transformative power of energy for economic development and including 600 million people who today do not live without energy. How do we do that? Well, we deliver energy as a service. As I said, um, our knowledge, experience, background is about power generation and energy. But solving the energy gap is not about technology. It's about cooperation, working with great companies, local companies in Africa, which are already in the energy market, but it's also about how do we make a service available to people, and particularly SMEs, 80% of the companies in Africa are small and medium-sized enterprise, and they generate most of the jobs, particularly for the women and the youth, right? So as we speak here today, power has been cut at least five to 10 hours in every single sub country of Sub-Saharan Africa. I just to give you an example of South Africa. For that matter, maybe I would say the most developed and advanced country in, sub in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. Every day, the power it cut is about between three and five hours. Every single day. Now, put that in your head for a second and think about hospitals, vulnerable people, aging people, people in respiratory devices. Every day, their life is put at risk. Three to five hours a day. We serve commercials, industry, and one industry which is extremely important to me as a granddaughter and daughter of farmers is in agriculture. Africa has the most arable land in, 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 in the world, and most of the people, 80% of the population, is tied to the land. Yet, the way we do Af agriculture in Africa is still 3,000 years behind, right? To be able to mechanize, you need energy. It's the foundation of everything. So, as Kauru Energy, leveraging the experience we have from the, um, the power industry where we are uh, from, we're coming into the market and has, um, Julie says, uh, previously uh, with, backed by Rolls Royce, give us seed funding to be able to put ourselves in the market there, putting in new models where we actually actively <laughs> contribute to um, solving the energy gap. How do we do that? To develop a sector, you need to industrialize. That what happened with the rail, what happened with automotive, what happened with aerospace. The sub-Saharan African market, in terms of energy, is made of two parts. Large-scale grid injections, and that has a big space and will continue to grow as that grid expands. And as we know, around half of the population will be served one way or another with small decentralized energy systems because they are most cost efficient and are easier to access the population, right? We standardize hybrid systems, leveraging the natural resource of the continent, 
that may be solar, maybe um, hydro, or maybe biomass. Combine that with standardized upfront financing. Small businesses may have solid cash flow, but they don't have the capex. So we make sure raising funds with our investor base to finance the asset. And most importantly, as we know that energy is just the fundament in which people can develop an economy and develop their life, all our assets are digitalized and that enable us to actually provide services to the population because let us be on no doubt, energy doesn't change people's life. It's the productive use of that energy that changes people's life. It's the productive use of energy that has enabled this place to happen, right? So making sure that we can provide additional services for people to harness that energy is at the corner piece and the center for everything that we do, okay? What do we deliver? For our customers, 100,000 small and medium-sized businesses in Africa, 600 million people who do not have access to energy, reliable and affordable energy. Reliable and affordable energy as a baseline for economic growth. For investors, this is the market of the future. By 2050, 2.1, 2.4 billion people. These are consumers, 2.4 consumers. If you don't have energy, you cannot sell your product. And I'm talking here, I think, for most investors and etc. We provide a large vehicle of investment because we manage portfolio of assets, portfolio of um, decentralized energy systems, right? So this is really providing a vehicle for sustainable and robust return for investors. And obviously, we only have one planet, right? And it's people who will take care of the planet, making sure 1.2 billion people, which today have other priorities, are contributing, included, and in fighting climate change, that is extremely important to us. And that's the reason we wake up every morning. And as someone says, happiness is not only a decision, but it can be also found, even in the darkest moment, just provided you turn the light on. Thank you very much. <laughs>